Hello everyone, this is a quick video to show you how to mount volume shadow copies on a live system and access the contents using only built-in Windows tools. This can be useful for incident response, system administration, file recovery, or a variety of other purposes. I'm not going to explain how shadow copies work in this video because I assume that if you're watching this, you already have a basic understanding of the purpose and function of the technology. So with that said, let's switch over to our Windows 10 VM and load up an administrative command prompt. And most people are already familiar with the command VSS admin list shadows. This command will actually show you all of the volume shadow uh, copies on the system and on which it's run. And if you look right here, you'll actually see shadow copy volume listed under each of these, which is the path to the actual shadow copy volume. It's not as easy as just CDing to that path or something of that nature, uh, but it is quite easy. So let's go to users and my user and the desktop. And what we're going to do is use the mklink command, which, as you can see here, creates a symbolic link, not unlike ln-s on a Linux system. So we're going to do mklink slash d, and we'll call it stuff, which is the name of the uh, directory link on our desktop that uh, we're going to create. And then we'll just pick one of these volume shadow copies. How about, uh, how about this one, the top one? And copy that and paste it right here. Now... I'm going to do one important thing wrong so I can show you what happens when you omit one thing. So here we go. You can see that we've successfully created a symbolic link. Everything looks good, but when we click on it, we get an error saying that we don't currently have permission to access the folder. So let's go ahead and remove stuff and let's recreate it. But this time we're going to put a trailing backslash at the end of volume shadow copy one right here. That one little slash is very important. We repeat the same command, we get the same looking folder, only now we can actually browse the contents of this volume shadow snapshot live. So if I drill down into the user directory and go into desktop, we'll actually see that there is, uh, for example, a file here, clean.bat, which is not appearing on the live Windows desktop here. This was something contained in one of these older volume shadow snapshots. So if for some reason that file contains something of some forensic value or something of that nature, we could go and retrieve it. The other interesting thing about volume shadow copy is that uh, oftentimes we'll see uh, a bad guy, let's say, uh, have some contraband or something that they're not supposed to have on a particular system, and they will attempt to securely erase that particular file or files uh, using sdelete or cipher slash w or some other command. Uh, the problem with that is, is there's a good chance that if volume shadow copies are enabled, which they are by default on a uh, Windows desktop operating system, not on a server OS, but on desktop, there's a very good chance that one of those volume shadow snapshots contains the very file that the bad guy thought he securely erased. And maybe he did securely erase it, but he didn't take into account, perhaps, that a volume shadow snapshot might still contain that evidence. So forensically, there's all kinds of stuff that, that we can use volume shadow copies for. And of course, also, just in case we accidentally deleted something that may be restored by uh, browsing to a previous snapshot. So a lot of good uses here, and uh, hopefully you'll find this video useful, and I would like to thank you for watching.